<laughs> it's so good. Mm. That's so good. Some of you might be a little confused. Let's back up a little bit. My favorite drink as a kid was three parts orange juice to two parts Sprite. And if you've never had it, I promise you it's delicious. You gotta give it a try. And for part A, write a proportion that gives the parts of Sprite needed for six parts of orange juice. This type of problem is really common with proportions. Anytime you're dealing with recipes where you might need to double the recipe or triple the recipe or quadruple the recipe, if you're cooking for more people, proportions can help you figure out how much of each ingredient you might need. So let's do that for orange juice and Sprite. One quick tip when you're writing proportions is to first set up a table. So that's what we're gonna do. So on the left side, we're gonna put orange juice and Sprite. I'll just write OJ and Sprite. And then in the first column, I'm gonna label that parts. And our original recipe was three parts orange juice. So I'll put a three there to two parts Sprite. I'll put a two there. Now don't get too confused with the word parts. Parts is kind of just like a placeholder for units. Um, when they say it's three parts orange juice to two parts Sprite, what that means is that you could use whatever units you want and as long as you have three, whether that's three liters or three gallons or three milliliters, whatever of orange juice, that you also use the same units uh, for the Sprite. So you could do three gallons of orange juice to two gallons of Sprite. You could do three liters of orange juice to two liters of Sprite. It really just depends on uh, what you have handy to measure and how much of whatever you're making you need. Now that we have that second column, let's go to the third column and also I'm gonna write parts and this is what I am making. So I need to figure out how much Sprite uh, is needed for six parts of orange juice. So I'm gonna put a six in the row that's labeled orange juice. So now you can see the table. What we're trying to find is X, how much Sprite is needed when there's six parts of orange juice. And now we're ready to write our proportions. So there's two ways we can do proportions. First is to use the columns, where I would have three over two is equal to six over X. That's one way to write a proportion. And you can see that uh, the numerators, the three and the six are the same units, parts of orange juice. And then the denominators are also the same units, parts of Sprite. The other way we could write uh, a proportion is instead of using the columns, we could use the rows. So on the left side, we're gonna have three to six. So the units on the left side match, uh, they're the parts of orange juice is gonna be equal to, and we do the same. So we would do two over X. So now we've got the Sprite on the right side. So those are two ways to write a proportion for the exact same problem. Either one is fine, so I am just going to box both. Part B, solve the proportion. We're trying to find the value for X, which represents how much Sprite we would need to add uh, if we do six parts orange juice. We know that these two ratios are equal to each other, so they need to be equivalent, which means anything that I do to a numerator, I have to do the exact same thing to the denominator, or else they wouldn't stay equivalent and this wouldn't be a proportion. So then we can use that to help figure out what X is. So we can ask ourselves, well, how do we go from three to six in the numerator? And you would say times two. And we would do the exact same thing to the denominator now. So two times two means X has to be equal to four. And we can check that because Six over four, if we simplify, divide by two, divide by two, we would get three halves, which is exactly uh, the other ratio that we started with. So here we go. First, six parts of orange juice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nice. And two parts of Sprite. One, two. <laughs> It's so good. Here's some to try on your own. Example two, 
you've got an upcoming test that is worth a total of 40 points. Write a proportion that gives the number of points needed to get a 90%. Okay, the amount of times that I've had students ask, Mr. Jacobson, what do I need to get an 80? What do I need to get a 85%, 90, 95%? Always, right before tests, students always wanna know what they need to score in order to get whatever percent. I'm gonna teach you how to figure it out yourself, so no more asking your teacher. Here we go. So I'm gonna start the exact same way we did in example one and start with a table. So let's start to fill it in. If we're taking a test, there's basically two numbers you need to know. You need to know how many points you got, so I'll just put my points that you got on the test, and then uh, total points. How many points was the test worth? So we'll put that at the bottom. So if you need to get a 90% on the test, remember percents are just ratios where the denominator needs to be 100. Percent literally means per 100. So 90% would mean you scored 90 out of a total of 100 points. But this test is actually worth 40 points. So where do we put that 40? Well, it needs to go in the total points row. So I'm gonna put the 40 right there. We need to know the number of points you scored to get a 90%. So my points is gonna be an X right there. Now we're ready to set up our proportion. I'm gonna use the columns. So I'm gonna start with 90 over 100 is equal to X over 40. Before I box my answer, I can simplify the fraction on the left side, 90 over 100. I can divide both of those by 10. So I'm gonna simplify that to nine tenths. So simplified uh, proportion would look like nine over 10 is equal to X over 40. And I will box that answer. Let's try B. It's all the proportion. All right, so let's start with our proportion we just wrote down. So we had nine tenths is equal to X over 40. We're gonna solve it the exact same way we did in example one, just using mental math. I need to figure out what X is, so I'm gonna use the exact same uh, direction and say, well, how do I get from 10 to 40? Pretty simple, times four. So I do the exact same thing to the numerator. Uh, nine times four is gonna give us 36, so X is equal to 36, which means if the test is out of 40 points, you need to score at least a 36 to get 90% or above. Here's some to try on your own. <laughs> That's so good still. I love that. 